Okay, so in this video we're going to finish up our free fall and projectile motion unit by talking about projectile motion. So, what is a projectile? Well, a projectile is an object that is um, launched into the air and is acted upon only by gravity. Meaning, um, just to tie this back into the last video, if it's acted only upon gravity, that means it is in free fall. Okay? So I said this in the last video, but a projectile is basically an object that is not only is it in free fall, but it's also moving horizontally to the side. A projectile does not sustain its own motion, meaning it does not have an engine. It's not powered by anything. The only thing acting upon it is gravity, okay? but it's also moving horizontally. Now, um, another vocab word that you should know is um, trajectory. Um, when you talk about a projectile, an object in projectile motion, the path that it, it takes as it travels um, is actually a parabola. And so that's something that you want to make sure that you add to your notes. Okay, the path of a projectile is parabolic. It is a parabola. And so after you add that to your notes, I want to show you a simulation. Okay, so in this simple example, we have a cannon on a, um, a pillar that can move up and down, and I can change the angle of the cannon if I want. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to change um, the trajectory. Okay, so actually, let me, let me do this. All right, so when I hit fire, you can see the blue line represents the trajectory of the projectile, and you can see it's kind of curved like a parabola. And that's true no matter what the angle is. If I, you know, make the angle zero degrees, it becomes, you know, kind of half of a parabola. If I make the angle higher, it goes up, and then comes back down. Okay, again, still a parabola. Okay, so when you're talking about projectile motion, the shape of that trajectory is parabolic. In the shape of a parabola. Now, getting back to uh, projectile motion, what are some examples of projectiles? Well, again, a projectile is basically anything launched into the air acted only upon by gravity. And so there's lots of examples of projectiles that you might be familiar with. For example, um, you know, cannonball shot out of a cannon. A bullet shot out of a gun is a very common example of a projectile. Um, but also, if you think in terms of sports, when you throw, for example, a football, if I can spell football, I suppose football has a B in it. Okay, so a football, when you throw a football, the only force acting on it is gravity, and so that would be an example of a projectile. Or baseball. Or, you know, golf ball. Or soccer ball. Or you know, a tennis ball. Okay, those are all examples of projectiles. Objects that are in free fall, they, they are in free fall. They have the acceleration due to gravity that we talked about in the last video, but they're also moving horizontally at the same time. Okay, so the projectiles are very, very common in real life. Now, on the next slide, we'll talk about some of the concepts of uh, projectile motion, and we'll, we'll do a few slides of that, and then um, we'll get into calculations here in a little bit. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, so here's what you need to know about projectile motion. Unlike a normal freefall problem, which is one dimensional, right? We, we did that in the last video where you have objects just, you know, falling straight down. Projectiles have two dimensions. They're two dimensional problems, okay? Because not only are they falling down, but they're also moving horizontally to the side. And so what we would say is a projectile actually has two types of motion at the same time. Number one, it's in free fall. Okay, that means it has vertical motion. Vertical, if you don't know what vertical means, just means up and down. Okay, think like along the y-axis on a graph. It also has horizontal motion. And by horizontal, I mean, you know, from side to side. Think like along the x-axis or along the horizon. Okay, that's what horizontal means. So every projectile has these two types of motion. Now, to be more specific, the two types of motion are actually types of motion that we've seen before. In the x direction, the, the horizontal direction, we have a type of motion called constant 
velocity. And we know about constant velocity because that's what we learned about in our first unit. The equation for constant velocity looks something like this. Delta x, that's the x displacement or the horizontal displacement, is equal to v times t. Okay. That's just a constant velocity equation. It's literally the first equation we learned about this year. In the y direction, or in the uh, vertical motion, we have constant acceleration. And this is what we learned about in our last video that's called free fall. And remember, the equation that we use for free fall is delta y, where delta y is the vertical displacement, the up and down displacement, is equal to 1 half times g. Remember, g stands for the acceleration due to gravity. That's that negative 10 meters per second squared times t squared. Okay, so these are our two projectile motion equations. And so we're going to be using both of these in combination to solve problems with projectile motion. Now, delta y, okay, that's the vertical displacement. This is typically associated with height. Okay, it's not the same thing as height necessarily because um, delta y is usually negative for a falling object, but it's typically associated with height. Okay, so think like in math, y is up and down, and then x is side to side. And this delta x has a name. This is what's called the range. Okay, this is how far the projectile travels horizontally. Okay, so pause it there and make sure you add this into your notes. Okay, so we'll be coming back to these equations in a few minutes, but make sure you have this in your notes, because this is important information. Okay, and just to kind of relate these, these things back to the simulation we, we looked at a second ago, um, remember the cannon on the cliff that we had? So, for example, let's say I shoot a cannon off of a cliff, and it goes like this. All right, delta y would be like this. So in this case, because th this this cliff or the cylinder thing is 11 meters, I would say delta y is negative 11 meters. And then the range is how far it travels in the x direction. That would be this right here. Okay. So this black line that I just drew right down here, that's what delta x would be. That's what's called the range. That's how far the projectile travels horizontally. Okay, so delta x, delta y. Okay, so just kind of keep that in your mind. All right, now let's move on. And ask yourself this question. So let's say you have a bullet and you have a pistol. And let's say the pistol shoots a bullet horizontally, that means completely flat, at the exact same time that a second identical bullet is dropped from the same height as a pistol. Okay, answer this question. True or false? The bullet that is shot forward will hit the ground first. True or false? Okay, so the actual answer to the question is false. In fact, both bullets are going to hit the ground at the same time. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is basically the only difference between the bullet that's shot and the bullet that's dropped is the horizontal motion. Okay, The bullet that's shot has horizontal motion. It's a projectile. The one that's dropped does not have horizontal motion. But here's the key concept in projectile motion. The horizontal motion and the vertical motion, both are completely independent of each other. They don't affect each other at all. Okay, so no matter how fast the bullet is shot, as long as it's shot horizontally, they're going to hit the ground at the same time. Now, of course, you know, if you point the gun at the ground, uh, that, that bullet's going to hit first. Um, I'm assuming that, that the gun is lo like perfectly flat and level, and that the bullet that comes out of the gun is, is moving completely horizontally. Okay, so I'm going to link two videos so that you can kind of see examples of this. Okay, so that is one of the key concepts of projectile motion, um, that the horizontal and vertical motion of a projectile are independent of each other. Um, 
And so it doesn't matter how fast uh, you throw something, as long as it's from the same height, it's going to land at the same time. Now, what affects the time for the projectile to land? Well, in general, um, it depends only on the height because the horizontal velocity has no effect on the vertical motion. And you should already have this, this last bullet point just says what's the shape of a projectile's trajectory. That's the parabola. We talked about that a few minutes ago. Okay, so we talked about how projectiles have two types of motion that are independent of each other, horizontal motion and vertical motion. And we kind of talked about this a few minutes ago, like in, in more specific detail, that the horizontal motion, the type of motion, is constant velocity. And what, what, what we would say then is the horizontal velocity, that means the x velocity, is constant, meaning it doesn't change. Now, what about the vertical velocity? Because remember, a projectile is not only moving to the side, with horizontal motion, but it's also falling because it's in free fall. If you look at the vertical motion, you don't have constant velocity because you have acceleration. Why do you have acceleration? Well, because of gravity. Remember that little acceleration due to gravity thing we talked about in the last video, that negative 10 meters per second squared? Okay, so the vertical velocity, the y velocity of a projectile is changing all the time because of gravity. Okay, so basically we have constant velocity in the x direction, constant acceleration, free fall in the y direction. Okay, so if you need to pause it there and look at it some more, then do so. Now, if you think in terms of, you know, um, what do the... Um, what does the velocity look like? Well, let's go back to the simulation for a second, and I want to show you something. And what I'm going to show you is how you can actually take the velocity of a projectile, and you can think of it in two pieces. Okay, so look at what's on my screen right here. So these green arrows basically represent the what's called the components of the uh, velocity of the projectile. Okay, so this is what it looks like normally. Now, if you look at the pieces or the components, I want you to notice that there's basically two pieces. There's the X piece, you see this green arrow here pointing to the right, and there's the Y piece, the vertical component, that's pointing up right now. Okay, so you see these two little green arrows here. Now, as I go forward in time, I want you to watch how they change. Notice that the green up arrow is shrinking. The arrow pointing to the right is remaining the same. Okay, here at the highest point, the projectile stops moving up. I would say its y velocity is zero, its vertical velocity is zero, but the horizontal velocity, remember that's constant, never changes. And so if you look at the length of that arrow pointing to the right, that stays the same the whole time. Okay, so two types of velocity at the same time. The horizontal velocity is constant, but the vertical velocity is not. And again, the reason for that is because the acceleration due to gravity acts down. Okay, in other words, the acceleration due to gravity is vertical, and it causes the vertical velocity to change, because that's what acceleration does. All right. One more concept really quickly, and then we'll do some um, examples. Concept question. An airplane flying straight and level drops a bomb. Where in relationship to the airplane does the bomb land? See if you can answer this question. Okay, so the answer to this question is actually C, uh, sorry, um, B, right below the plane. And the reason is, and you can kind of see in this picture what happens, as the bomb is falling, it always stays directly below the plane because the, um, the bomb is a projectile and it has uh, vertical motion and it has horizontal motion. And if you think of the horizontal motion, the bomb is traveling at the same speed horizontally as the plane. 
and so as the plane flies, the bomb stays directly below it, even as it's falling. Okay, so it's basically kind of like the drop bullet question again. Okay, so pause it there if you want to look at that picture some more. And then I'm going to include, uh, sorry, include two links to videos that I want you to watch um, that are both pretty short, just kind of showing you uh, what these look like. The second video, you only have to watch like 45 seconds of the video from 7.31 to 8.13. Okay, so let's do some examples. So example 0 0.5, which of the following is not true regarding projectiles? So, so see if you can answer the question. Okay, so the answer to the question is C, the horizontal velocity decreases over time. That's not true because with a projectile, you have um, constant velocity in the horizontal motion. So that horizontal velocity, the x velocity, does not change over, over time. It's constant. All of the other ones are true statements that you need to know. Okay. Projectiles do have a constant vertical acceleration. Again, that's that acceleration due to gravity at negative 10 meters per second squared. And because of that, the vertical velocity does decrease over time because it changes by negative 10 every second. All right, so we talked about the, um, the two equations. So far, you should have those in your notes. And so now we're going to um, and do some calculation problems. Again, make sure you write these down so you, you kind of have them with you um, as you're working through these examples. Okay, so we've got two equations, one for delta x for the horizontal motion and one for delta y for the vertical motion. Okay, so example one. The question says, a, a car rolls off a cliff. Don't worry, the driver jumped free at the last second. At 30 meters per second, and hits the ground 3.5 seconds later. The question, the first question says, how tall is the cliff? Now, like any problem, you always start with your givens. Okay, the first thing I see is this 30 meters per second. Now, the nice thing about projectile motion, unlike the last unit, is there's only one velocity, and that velocity is Vx. That is the horizontal velocity. Okay, so when I see that meters per second, and I know that's a velocity, I know how to label that. Just like time, 3.5 seconds, I know that has to be time, because it's in seconds. So those are my givens. Now, what is my first unknown? How tall is the cliff? We did this type of problem in the last uh, video with free fall. How tall is asking us about delta y? That's the vertical displacement, the y displacement. So that is our first unknown. And then our second unknown, how far from the cliff's base did the car land? If you need a visualization, here's the car, here's the cliff, the car is going to go boop in a parabola, and basically this is the base of the cliff, this is where the car lands, and so that second question is asking about the range, that's that delta x. Okay, and so that's our other unknown. Now, for the first question, how tall is the cliff, all I need to do is use my delta y equation. I only have the one delta y equation, so this is very simple for me to solve. I do 1 half times g, which is negative 10, times t, which is 3.5 squared. And all I need to do is plug this into the calculator. Please don't forget that the, the only thing being squared is the 3.5. So you should do that first, think PEMDAS, you should do 3.5 squared times negative 10, and then times, I would do times 0.5 because 0.5 is a half. And so delta Y is negative 61.25 meters. So how tall is the cliff? It's 61.25 meters. Remember, you can't have negative height. How far from the cliff's base did the car land? Okay, so I want delta x. Delta x, remember I only have one equation for delta y and one equation for delta x. Okay, so delta x is vx, that's the, the horizontal velocity, times t. I have vx, that's 30, that was one of my givens, and I have the time is 3.5, 
And so again, all I need to do is multiply those things. And so this is a very simple type of um, problem that should give you 105 meters. 105 meters. Let me try that again. 105 meters. I can't, I can't draw five for some reason. So that's example one. Pause it there if you need to look at it. So let's do at least one or two more quick examples. Okay, so example two says a ball is launched horizontally from a 100 meter high cliff at 20 meters per second. Now from the picture, I know right away that this 100 meters, this is going to tell me my delta y is negative 100 meters. Now, how do I know it's negative? Because the ball is going down 100 meters. And how do I know that's delta y and not delta x? Because if you look at the picture, this is telling you how far the ball falls down. So think up and down, that's delta y. Side to side, that's delta x, just like in math. X is, you know, horizontal, Y is vertical. So delta Y is negative 100 meters. Okay, and it's launched horizontally at 20 meters per second. So again, looking at those units, meters per second, that's a velocity, that's got to be my VX. So here are my givens. There's two questions. How long does it take to land, and then what is the range? So let's look at the first question first. I'm asked about time. Now, at this point, you might get a little stuck because you might be thinking, well, both of the equations have time. How do I know which one to use? So I will give you a hint. Nine times out of ten, if if you're looking for time, you're probably going to be using the, the delta y equation, most likely. Okay? Because g is a constant. See, the problem with the top equation is we don't know what delta x is. So if we want to find time and we don't have delta x, we don't have enough information to use that first equation. So we're going to be using the second equation. We do have delta y, so I'm going to plug in for delta y. Delta y is negative 100. That's equal to 1 half. Remember, g is the acceleration due to gravity. That's negative 10 times t squared. Before I go to solve this, I'm going to simplify a little bit. I'm going to write this over here. Negative 100 equals half of negative 10 is negative 5. I want to get t by itself. I say what's being done to t, it's being squared and it's being multiplied by negative 5. To undo that multiplied, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5, like that. Negative 100 divided by negative 5 is 20. And then to undo that squared, I need to take the square root on both sides. How long does it take the rock to land? I use my calculator. I do the square root of 20, and I get 4.47 seconds. That's the answer to my question. Now the second question says what is the range of the ball? Remember range is delta x. That's how far it travels horizontally. And now it's very easy because I only have one equation for delta x. So I don't need to think about which equation do I use. There's only one delta x equation. Okay, delta x equals vx times t. I had Vx from the beginning, that was 20 meters per second. Now I have the time, it's 4.47, that's what I just found. And so now I just need to multiply those th things together. And I get 89.4 meters. Okay, so that is the range of ball. Okay, so now you see two examples with projectile motion. Pause it there if you need to look at that some more. Okay, and then this next slide is just kind of showing you how the work uh, for that question goes. And let's see, I just want to take a look at um, one more calculation. I want you to see if you can do example three on your own. So pause it here and try to get the, the time. 
for the bullet to hit the ground. Okay, so for example three, let's see how what you did compared to uh, what I have. Okay, so hopefully what you got was that the givens are, because the height is 1.6 meters, that means your delta y, when you do the calculation, is going to be negative 1.6 meters because the bullet is going to fall down 1.6 meters. And it says the rifle bullet lands 487 meters away. Okay, so if we already have delta y, and that's in meters, this other thing in meters has to be delta x. Okay, so that's 487. Now, our first unknown that I asked you to find is how long, and how long is always a question about time. And I said before that 9 times out of 10, if you're asked to solve time, then you're probably going to be using the delta y equals 1 half g t squared equation. Okay, so you plug in, you get negative 1.6 equals 1 half times negative 10 times t squared. You simplify this. Half of negative 10 is negative 5. You divide both sides by negative 5. And so that is going to be 0 0.32 equals t squared. And then you would take the square root of both sides. Okay, and so if I get my calculator and I do 0 0.32 and I take the square root of that, I get 0.57 seconds. And then my last question asked me to find the original speed of the bullet. Questions about how fast or speed or velocity. There's only one velocity in this whole unit, and that is Vx. Okay, so the last question is asking for Vx. I have delta x is 487. I want Vx. I now have the time. And so I'm not going to finish answering the question, but you would just put this into your calculator, and that would be your Vx. Okay, so you've now seen three full projectile motion example questions. These questions are not super challenging um, or difficult as long as you identify everything correctly and you do the algebra steps correctly. Okay, so pause it here if you need to finish writing this down. As always, please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video.